If there's one fighter jet that keeps popping up in headlines, procurement rumors, and geopolitical debates, it's the Russian Su-35, also known as the Flanker E. Today, a deep dive into what makes the Su-35 so sought after. Its super maneuverability, powerful sensors, weapons, export story, upgrade path, and the politics driving demand. By the end, there's a clear picture of whether the Su-35 is a smart acquisition or a risky bet in today's contested skies. What is the Su-35? The Su-35 is a deeply modernized derivative of the Su-27 airframe, upgraded into a 4 plus generation multi-role fighter that emphasizes agility, long-range sensors, heavy payload, and survivability improvements without the full stealth of fifth-generation designs. It uses two AL-41 F-1S engines with thrust vectoring, an advanced N-035 Urbis E radar, and a comprehensive electronic warfare suite, bringing it close to fifth-gen performance in certain mission profiles while keeping acquisition costs lower than full stealth platforms. Why it's considered super maneuverable. The hallmark of the Su-35 is super maneuverability. Enabled by powerful engines and 3D thrust vectoring nozzles that allow the aircraft to execute extreme post-stall maneuvers, rapidly change nose pointing, and sustain high angles of attack for close-in dogfighting. Thrust vectoring, combined with a large lifting body and digital flight controls, makes the Su 35 capable of outmaneuvering many legacy and contemporary fighters in within visual range engagements, an advantage repeatedly highlighted in the platform's marketing and demonstrations. The Urbis E radar, big power, long reach. A central reason Air Forces look at the Su-35 is its N035 Urbis E radar, a powerful PESA set capable of detecting large aerial targets at up to roughly 400 kilometers, tracking 30, and engaging eight simultaneously, plus synthetic aperture modes for high-resolution ground mapping. Against surface and maritime targets, the Urbis E provides robust detection ranges and mapping modes, complementing the aircraft's multi-role mission capability and enabling long-range missile employment strategies that are relevant in both contested and permissive airspaces. Survivability and electronic warfare. The Su-35 integrates the L-175M Kibini M electronic countermeasure system and applies radar absorbent materials to reduce frontal radar reflections, cutting the radar cross-section compared to the classic Su-27 and complicating enemy tracking and engagement at range. While it is not a stealth jet, these survivability measures, paired with speed, altitude, jamming, and long-range missiles, aim to tilt the odds in beyond visual range fights and enhance survivability against modern integrated air defense systems. Weapons and loadout. The Su-35 carries up to around 8,000 kilograms of ordnance across multiple hardpoints, including advanced air-to-air -air missiles, anti-ship and anti-radiation missiles, guided bombs, and a 30-millimeter internal cannon, making it a true multi-role platform with teeth. It can employ very long-range air-to-air weapons like the R-37M in Russian service concepts, leveraging the Urbis E radar to attempt engagements before adversaries close the distance, an approach increasingly relevant in standoff-centric air combat. Performance specs at a glance core dimensions, length about 21.9 meters, wingspan 15.3 meters, height 5.9 meters, Empty weight around 19,000 kilograms. Max takeoff weight roughly 34,500 kilograms. Typical payload around 8,000 kilograms. Speed and altitude. Top speed around Mach 2.25 at altitude and service ceiling near 18 to 20 kilometers. Backed by twin AL-41 F1S engines that each produce 86.3 kilonewtons dry and over 137 kilonewtons with afterburner, enabling powerful climb and acceleration. Where the Su-35 shines air superiority, super maneuverability, 
plus long-range radar and missiles make the Su-35 potent in both the WVR and BVR, giving Air Forces flexible options across mission phases, multi-role strike, with ground mapping modes, anti-ship capabilities, and a broad weapons catalog, the Su-35 can double as a heavy striker, particularly in scenarios prioritizing speed and standoff upgrade path, and future-proofing. The Su-35's open architecture and modular subsystems allow avionics and weapon updates, making it more future-proof in long-service lives, an attractive trait for countries planning to integrate indigenous munitions or evolving EW suites. Russian industry continues incremental refinements with periodic delivery batches to the Russian Aerospace Forces reflecting production cadence and iterative upgrades, despite sanctions pressures on components and supply chains. Export history and operators. China was the first export customer, receiving 24 Su-35s under a 2015 contract completed by 2019. The aircraft are understood to have been used for evaluation, deterrence, and supplementing domestic fleets during a period of transition to newer Chinese types. Newer deliveries and deals have centered on Algeria and Iran, with reports of Algeria receiving aircraft in 2025 and Iranian confirmations of orders, reflecting a shift in export markets due to geopolitical alignments and Western pressure on other potential buyers. Why some countries choose it? cost-performance equation. For air forces that can't afford fifth-generation fleets or need numbers fast, the Su-35 provides a high-end 4++ fighter with serious BVR capability and exceptional dogfighting performance. Geopolitical signaling. Buying the Su-35 can signal strategic alignment with Russia especially for countries facing Western pressure or seeking diversified suppliers, an explicit consideration in several procurement talks. Why others stay away, sanctions and pressure, prospective deals, including with Indonesia and Egypt, have stalled or been canceled amid fears of sanctions or financing complications, highlighting the political risks inherent in Russian defense procurement, logistics and integration, Western aligned air forces may face difficulties integrating Russian systems into NATO style frameworks, complicating data links, training pipelines, and sustainment ecosystems. Battlefield lessons and tactics. Yeah. In modern combat, Russian forces have leveraged the Su 35's radar reach and long range missiles to shape airspace and threaten high value assets demonstrating a doctrinal shift towards standoff engagements while preserving fighters from dense SAM zones. The aircraft's performance in contested environments underscores the trade-offs of non-stealth platforms. Survivability relies on tactics, altitude, EW, and standoff munitions rather than low observable design alone. Comparisons, Rafale, F-16, and others against Rafale-class fighters the Su-35 usually wins on raw maneuverability and payload, while Western jets often hold advantages in sensor fusion, mature AESA radars, and network-centric interoperability, leading to context-dependent outcomes. Versus legacy F-16S, the Su-35 dominates kinematics and range, though late-block F-16S with AESA and modern missiles narrow the gap against stealth platforms like the F-35, the Su-35 relies on EW, long-range missiles, and cooperative tactics to compensate. Cost, production, and sustainment unit cost estimates vary widely, but the Su-35 is generally regarded as cheaper than fifth-gen fighters, with recent reporting suggesting delivery batches and modest annual production paced by supply chain constraints and domestic priorities. Sustainment depends on access to spares, depot level support, and engine maintenance cycles. Sanctions can slow avionics and radar component flows, influencing fleet readiness and delivery timelines. Who operates it today? Russia fields the largest fleet, 
With more than 100 delivered and ongoing batches scheduled through 2025, distributed across several regiments and training centers, including deployments in Syria for combat evaluation. Export operators include China, which took 24 aircraft, and Algeria, which has begun receiving units. Iran has publicly signaled orders, positioning the Su-35 as a core air superiority asset in the Middle East-North Africa region going forward. China's limited purchase of 24 Su-35s is widely understood as a bridging step, while domestic lines matured, providing access to sensor and engine concepts while shifting bulk force structure to J-16 and 5th Gen J-20 fleets. Algeria's reported reception of Su-35s in 2025 aligns with a strategy of high-end deterrence on the Mediterranean flank, likely tapping into air superiority and maritime strike profiles. Iran's orders indicate a leap in air-to-air -air capability compared to its aging fleet, aiming to deter regional adversaries and protect critical airspace with long-range BVR tools and modern EW. Operational concepts to watch standoff BVR dominance, pairing Urbis E with long range missiles and high altitude tactics to shape air corridors and deny adversaries freedom of action. Multi role strike, using synthetic aperture ground mapping to cue precision strikes while leveraging speed to reduce exposure windows near dense air defenses. Conclusion Who should buy it and why? The Su-35 makes the most sense for countries prioritizing immediate air superiority gains, heavy payload flexibility, and cost-effective acquisition relative to fifth-gen options, especially where geopolitical alignment supports Russian sourcing. Nations tightly integrated into Western networks or highly exposed to sanctions may find the political and logistical costs outweigh the fighter's performance, steering them toward Western or domestic alternatives despite higher price tags.